Welcome to the channel guys. It is the weekend after a rod run. Guess what that means? Drum roll please. I didn't make it. I uh, didn't even get close. Don't have this done. Don't have the car done. But it means now that I can uh, work on things without being rushed. Just like I was doing the whole time. I did not act like I had a deadline at all. But uh, we're here. It's all good with me. Uh, I bought another little toy that we took her rod run instead. So been working on that a little bit which is taking away time from this uh i had a couple setbacks on some parts i needed with this uh on top of being out of town and whatever else excuse 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 so we're here and uh first things first can we just talk about how sketchy this thing is on the lift and that is a big big frame truck right there very long so today I'm gonna give you guys a walk around on some stuff. Obviously you can see behind me a door that I know a lot of you are interested in. Very happy with how that turned out, but first things first, we're going to tear apart the axle. And uh, no more dually. It's sad, it looks really cool under there, but we uh, bought another project. Uh, that'll be probably a year down the road or so, but another camper project. Uh, still won't give you too many details, but let's just put it this way, it needs the dually axles, so. Over here, I have a, uh, a forerunner axle that I already modified. I saved you guys the pain of having to deal with that. But these forerunner axles are uh, just glorified hunk of scrap metal, essentially. So the Tacoma axles are worth way too much money to try to buy one. So basically, you just huck, huck off, hack off all the uh, control arm mounts and whatever else you don't need. And you weld on some spring perches. These are low range, I believe. They're the extended ones, so that way it helps with axle wrap, which will probably help with that thing. And uh, it is wider than this axle anyways, so uh, as well as I have some new wheels and tires for it, but I'll show you guys those when I get all four on there. So I'm gonna set you up. We're gonna yank out this axle and uh, set it aside for now. I put a lot of time into that thing, but it is what it is. Um, if I were to make that dually axle work, even right now, I'd still be another probably two grand just into buying another set of tires, um, buying dually wheels, and as well as like a thousand dollars into adapters just to make it work from the six by seven and a quarter. But I still plan on doing that at some point. But as of right now, I need the dually axle elsewhere. So go ahead and. Uh, Yank her out, get it all swapped out. That way I can get all the wheels and tires on it. Once I get all the wheels and tires on it, we'll do the walk around. So I'm going to set you guys up here and there at least. It's probably going to take me a couple hours. So I'll film a little bit of it and uh, we'll get back to it once the uh, axles are swapped out. Well, as with anything related to this thing, that took longer than expected. I had to uh, reseal the diff on this and I knew I had to do that. But... I forgot that I hadn't already prepped everything and it's been a long time since I've had to deal with the uh, factory Toyota gaskets. Those suck. I don't know uh, if you guys have dealt with it. Um, if you have, you know what I'm talking about. They're just, they've been on there for 20 years, almost 30 years sometimes and they do not want to come off. But this, this is the remedy. Once you get it all cleaned up, screwed up some paint with the brake clean, but once you get it all cleaned up, throw some of that Permatex on there. Uh, it's gray, that's the gear oil stuff. I only use the Permatex brand too. It's always done me good. I've had that stuff probably for two years maybe in my uh, drawer. I used to have a whole bunch of it because I'd break diffs every other time I went out. So holds up good. I've never really had it leak uh, other than bad prep. But as long as you clean it up good and use enough brake clean. And then the other thing is after you get it on there, uh, put your mate your surfaces together and then let it sit for a second there's instructions on the back of it and then uh, tighten it up and give it a good amount of time to cure before you actually put oil in it um, I've done it out on the trail before and just put oil back in it immediately and it holds fine but I try to do everything as good as I can be careful when you're cleaning up the, uh, the surfaces especially with razor blades so anyways now we're finally gonna get back to setting you up, getting that axle out from underneath there, putting this one in, 
and then show you around. That wasn't too bad. The uh, time lapse makes it seem like it's a little less work, but still, I think it only took probably 20 minutes. So we got the old dually axle that I retrofit with an e-locker for those who didn't know. That obviously didn't come like that, but got an e-locker in there. This Forerunner axle had an e-locker. You can see they're kind of upside down from each other, but this had a e-locker, but again, I cut all the brackets off and put spring perches on. You can see how wide that axle is in comparison to the dually. It doesn't look too bad, but I'm definitely going to be probably throwing inch and a half wheel spacers on it just to get a little bit more width. I liked how wide that looked. Uh, for granted, the two tires kind of gave it a better look, but I'm going to go ahead and get that axle back under there. I'll save you guys the time lapse because it's just the reverse of what I did. I will have to switch uh, these around. If you look up top, there's washers on this side. I need to move them to this side. And the reason for that is I welded the spring perches on at 39 and a half center. Out of breath, sorry. Uh, 39 and a half center, which is what Tacoma is factory. And when I went to put that axle in, that axle already had spring perches and everything. I didn't think anything of it. I welded everything up for 39 and a half on the frame and then come to find out that one's set for like 39. I think it's 39, which is the older center width. So I ended up just moving the spring over with those washers. So it created kind of a, they're kind of triangulated, which is fine. Some of the newer vehicles do that, but now I don't have to do that. Now I got to move those washers which is part of the reason why i did it with washers instead of welding the whole mount so that way if i ever wanted to change it i could so got to move those washers real quick swap the shackle around wheel that thing back under there and uh put it on its own weight by now it's good enough i can tighten it up put some oil in it and i'll come back to you when she's outside what i have behind me i can only describe as everything i kind of envisioned it being and I'm quite happy about that. I have it out in full display mode for you guys, plus some goodies that we'll talk about here in a second. So since the last video, I uh, put in the windows and I'll throw in some pictures right here of what that beetle looked like. This is pretty self-explanatory if you took your own windows out, basically just to reverse, make sure you put your spacers in and uh, slap them on in there. You can see I still have to trim all the butyl off of it, but I plan on uh, still putting siding in, obviously. So since I haven't done that yet, I don't want to trim that because as soon as I put the siding in, it's going to make it squeeze tighter, which more is going to come out. So I just left it like that for now rather than cutting it twice. But here's our awning out. That's a Delta Wing 270. It is freestanding, but there is some legs in there if you ever need to drop it down. And uh, sorry for the road noise. Uh, it's better than the highway, but we are right next to a smaller road. Come all the way around, and you can see the new door that everyone was curious about. I don't have the tail light lenses on. I just ordered new ones. But here is basically a replacement uh, RV latch. I just got it from my local RV store. And you can see this is the same frame that was broken into. So I straightened it the best I could. This thing used to be in a kind of a spiral. <laughs> but the door came out really good. It's a little uh, out of square, the frame is. And that's kind of my fault. It was still welded from the factory, but the, the welds were starting to break everywhere. So I went ahead and welded it just how it sat. I didn't even bother to check to see if it was square. And it is not square. It's actually almost an eighth inch larger there than it is down here 
and then square wise it's just it's way out so this works pretty good for what it is if i was to redo the door i'd probably just do a whole new uh style like a whole new door not use the molding but i'm happy with it this will clear if you drop this leg down and stand it up so that's the only reason i'm not doing that right now it's just for display but if you come in here i'll include some pictures but you can see i completely beefed up the uh, inside of the door this was just half inch plywood before and these hinges actually used to bolt through right here and right into that plywood it was not very solid i did not like the way it was so i extended these hinges out an inch and just move relocated the holes those are the factory hinges they just have one inch added to them so that turned out pretty good and then we come on inside and you can see how i did the awning i built some window frames that uh the uh window can sandwich on from factory these were just wood and the wood would rot and then your window wouldn't seal this is much better in my opinion it's just the same size box tube that's everywhere else i used uh i think one sixteenth thick in here and one eighth thick outside for the uh, the outside bar i just wanted some more strength for that awning but it's tied in up here and i just used their the uh, iron man slotted plate and i burned it out at work the same uh, shape so that way i could have a little bit of kind of a free area to bolt through. And then this is sealed on the inside of the camper, on the outside of the camper, as well as through the bolts. So I'm not worried about any water intrusion there. I have it on the other side as well. Obviously there's no awning mount on that side, but just again, to get something for the window to sandwich to. A lot of Jeep going by. But you can see these crow's nest windows are in. Again, just a couple screws here and there, a couple screws on everything in here too, just because I don't want to uh, suck it all tight, like I said, and then put siding in. All this has got to get changed. Siding's got to get put in here, as well as some insulation and whatever else. But I have both gaskets needed to do the uh, pass-through area. I have the internal one and the external one. It's right here. There was kind of a snafu with that. That was one of the setbacks I had. The uh, guy told me to be done at the end of the week. Uh, basically stopped talking to me two months later. I get it back and it's the wrong color. So I wanted black, but gray, I guess, is what it's going to be because I don't want to deal with that guy again. And worst case, if I hate it, I'll go ahead and uh, I'll get it remade. I'll go through someone else, but it's just annoying. I just didn't want to deal with it again. So that's going to go here and I think it's going to look okay. It's really close to this color, but I just think black would look better because everything else we have is black. Uh, even this green doesn't really seem to mess with the color scheme, but I don't know, something other than gray. I didn't want more gray. We already have a lot of gray, so it is what it is. Hopefully it turns out good. It's just one little area and uh, it's all gonna tuck up in here. So you won't really see it, but you will see it at the same time. So I, I don't know. I'll let you guys know. I'll let you guys decide when the time comes. So here's our new wheels and tires. These are basically 33 by 10s, 33 by 10 fives or 11s or something. I wanted to go a little bigger, but Tacoma's rub already up front. And you have to cut way into these cab areas. You can see it's already kind of just from pulling it out of the shop, starting to scratch it up. So to alleviate that, we got a Total Chaos mid-travel kit with some Fox 2.5s. Now, I know that's not the creme de la crop when it comes to the shocks, but I know it's gonna be way better than factory. I mean, look at these things, so. Those are just clunky. The bushings are gone. It's just, it looks like crap in comparison. So, I'm really happy with those. They're not no Kings. Kings would be really cool, but, you know, Fox is where it's gonna be. I didn't go with the reservoir or the, the DSC. I went with the internal floating piston style. It's going to be more than enough for what this thing's going to do. It's not hitting any whoops. So. I got the tow mirrors on in the last video. I got a new condenser in since the last video. The other one was completely blown out and 
crappy. So you can see this awning bar and how that's mounted from the outside, tucked up behind. And then it just has the awning mounts that came with the Iron Man four by four awning. I just cut them off flat and then welded them directly onto that bar. So it mounts up pretty good. I don't know if we can get you up there to see. But overall, I'm really happy with how this thing's looking. It, it turned out really good, I think. And I hope you guys are liking what you're seeing. I'm sorry I'm not getting out too many videos on it, but when everything takes, you know, six hours to do and I can only work an hour on it each day, it's hard to film something over six days and make a decent, coercive video without repeating myself four million times. So here's how she looks. I hope you guys are enjoying it because I know I am. I mean, look at that thing. Ignore the junk over here. Might as well just rename this channel to Junkyard. But I'm happy with it. Hope you guys are happy with it. Hope you guys are happy with the content. Let me know what you want to see next. I plan on doing the seal and uh, fixing up a couple other little things. And it, oh, and the front end. And once the front end's done, it's drivable. So I'm going to end it off here. Thanks for watching, everyone. Hope you're having a good one.